Think of people that you know with migraine headaches or, or high blood pressure, skin rashes, high cholesterol, heart disease, the list goes on and on. All of these symptoms may be related to psychosomatic disorders. We have found through research that the efficiency of the immune system is compromised, damaged by certain stressors. And we have support for this from two areas of research, both from humans and from animals. We find that today it is widely accepted in the medical field among healthcare professionals that the mind is a powerful effect on the body and that this effect is especially negative when a patient feels helpless, when he feels he has no control. In the case of problems like headaches, uh, sleeplessness, um, even high blood pressure, more and more healthcare providers are teaching patients to control these by simple relaxation techniques, which can be very effective, more effective than medication. It seems obvious that the mind will have an effect on the body, and in recent years we've gathered some hard data that this is true, that the way that you think actually affects the way your body feels. Um, stress has real implications in terms of what it can do to the body, and psychosomatic disorders, or disorders where there's a physical symptom caused by a psychological problem, is a real hot topic in psychology today. Uh, because it's the border between psychology and medicine and relevant to almost all areas of our lives. Think of people that you know with migraine headaches or, or high blood pressure, skin rashes, high cholesterol, heart disease, the list goes on and on. All of these symptoms may be related to psychosomatic disorders. What I want to focus on today is an area of research on stress and illness, and this field is called psychoneuroimmunology, or PNI for abbreviation. I suggest that you abbreviate it. The word psychoneuroimmunology, psycho means the mind, the way that a person thinks. Neuro is the nervous system, and immunology is the body's defenses against disease, the immune system. The immune system has two important tasks, basically to recognize foreign invaders, things that come into the body, and then to inactivate them and remove them from the body. We have found through research that the efficiency of the immune system is compromised, damaged by certain stressors. And we have support for this from two areas of research, both from humans and from animals. And I'll start with some of the animal studies. So we know that rats or mice that are placed in a situation where there was uncontrollable or unpredictable stress, uh, for example, shining bright lights on them or giving them electrical shocks to their feet or overcrowding them, which, you know, would be stressful. When these rats are infected with cancer cells and then placed in an environment like that, they're much more likely to develop cancer under these stressful conditions than if they're in non-stressful conditions. Another really important study done with animals and immune functioning was done by a fellow named Robert Ader. And Ader was actually doing a study on taste aversion in rats when he discovered, quite by accident, that he was able to condition the rat's immune systems to malfunction. Now this has very powerful implications because if we can teach the immune system, if we can condition it to malfunction, then it makes sense that we could also condition it to get better and to heal itself without medicine. And that's very exciting. And that's where we are now in this research. And some of the studies on humans also support this idea that the mind can control the immune system. We know that people under great stress, when we analyze some of their immune functioning, we know that right before they experience a stressor, their immune systems become compromised. Uh, for example, accountants before tax time or students before final exams. So if you think in terms of classical conditioning, you know, like Pavlov and his experiments with dogs, in our case, the mental stress of just thinking about the exam or just thinking about being very busy at work is acting like, like Pavlov's bell, acting as a conditioned stimulus to depress the immune system. We find that today it is widely accepted in the medical field among healthcare professionals 
that the mind is a powerful effect on the body and that this effect is especially negative when a patient feels helpless, when he feels he has no control. Um, elderly people in nursing homes. We know that there was one study done on nursing home residents. One group of elderly people who felt that they were in control of their lives and they made the choice to be there. Another group who felt that they were placed there by their family members and who really didn't want to be there and they felt out of the control of the decision. Well, the ones who felt out of control were much more likely to get sick and to die, to lead unhealthy lives, while the ones who felt in control tended to be healthier. And there's another way in which the mind can exert a positive influence on the body. In the case of problems like headaches, uh, sleeplessness, um, even high blood pressure, more and more healthcare providers are teaching patients to control these by simple relaxation techniques, which can be very effective, more effective than medication. So there's real exciting implications with this work, and we're just beginning to understand how powerful the mind is in controlling the body.